few months ago, Splatoon 3 was announced to the public as the last surprise of the previous Nintendo Directs. And even if the trailer was 3 minutes long, the hype was real. However, the game won't come out before 2022, which means that, in the meanwhile, we can still enjoy Splatoon 2 without worrying too much about its sequel. Talking about Splatoon 2, today we are gonna find out how many Bibaron inputs are required to complete the not so original Splatoon 2 single player campaign Otsu Canyon. So, without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, in order to enter Octo Canyon, we first need to complete the tutorial, which, by my surprise, didn't require us any B button inputs. All the parts which require us to jump can actually be completed by just climbing the side walls and getting enough momentum. And to be fair, this also applies to most of the levels we're gonna play. Tent Attack Outposts is the first area of the game. In order to actually complete the story mode, not only we have to complete every level, but we also have to unlock every one of them in the overworld. In this case, there is no real challenge. Every entrance is either easily reachable or we can just teleport there from the menu once we deal enough damage with bombs or our main weapon. Level 1 is pretty linear, no big challenge here. Same goes for level 2. Both of those levels don't require us to press the B button a single time. And that's pretty much it. Now, instead of going for level 3, we're gonna go for all the easy challenges instead. The suction cup lookout is an interesting overworld area, but once we lock the charger in level 6, everything becomes so much easier for us. The level can easily be found and completed with zero presses thanks to all those... Um... Those grapplings. Once we're done, we can use the power of trick shots and bombs in order to find the remaining entrances. We can also teleport to the ones we've already found, in order to gain some time, or just escape from the otherwise unescapable spots. So, we are still at 0 B presses, and level 5, level 8, level 9, and the boss of this area can be easily completed without a single B button input either. Because the boat is pretty similar to the previous area, no real challenge here either. Level 10 doesn't require us to press the B button but seriously tested my patience in this section, and level 15 is pretty easy as well. Then we can easily defeat the third boss. Here we are at Slime Skin Carrison, the fourth area. Every single level can be easily unlocked like before, but we'll see very soon why this area is a problem. In the meanwhile, we can remove level 16, 17 and 21 from the list. And last, Cephalon HQ. Our B input limit made the exploration a bit harder than it already was, but nothing impossible. However, only level 22 was easily beatable by not pressing the B button once. So here we have it, about half of our problems are gone, and now we can focus on the complicated stuff. We can start by taking a look at level 3, and level 3 is a jumping tutorial. The first part of this level features evil stairs we have to jump on by pressing the B button. So here we are, seemingly forced to increase the counter for the first time. Seemingly. Because this inkable wall on the side of the stairs is there to save us from our fate, at least for now. Once we position on the very ledge of this platform, we're able to paint this wall, which we can carefully climb in order to skip a couple of stairs. This costed me many tries but repeat this process for two times and we will magically reach the next checkpoint, with still zero B button inputs. And... Um... Here... There is nothing we can do. As I said before, this level is a jumping tutorial, and in this case, we are just not fast enough the moment we drop from this platform. And trust me, I tried many many times, but there is really nothing we can do. So here we are. 2 B presses here, 1 jump here, and 1 more B press further in this level before finally completing it, for a total of 4 jumps only in level 3. I was really disappointed when I completed this level, for a moment I thought our counter would stay to 0 for a long time, I was wrong. But I decided to go on anyway. So here we are, fighting against our beloved Octohoven. The first two phases of this boss are quite simple. But the third one is something else. In order to reach the top of the oven, we'd have to climb the second um, slice of bread, which is something that, unfortunately, we can't do in the third phase. However, 
This doesn't stop us from throwing bombs at the tentacle once we climb the first slice. Octo Oven, Silver B presses. But from here, things will only get harder and harder. Level 7 features many cute squeegees. We can save bay inputs in this section by driving one of those robotic enemies until we can swim to the other side. But then, we have to increase our B press counter by 3. There is no way for us to skip those 3 jumps. Level 11, one jump. This level features a section in which we are forced to pick the key one of those tentacook dropped. Also, we are just gonna ignore the fact that I spent 20 minutes trying to figure out how to reach the spots while I could just, well, climb the ledge of that plat. I just didn't know that was thinkable. Now, you may be wondering so far why I added another counter named Holding B under the one we've been using so far. Well, level 12 is the answer to this question. Level 12 is one of the few levels featuring the bounce pad. So, here's the problem. Holding the P button while landing on a bounce pad will make us jump higher than usual, letting us to complete the level. But for obvious reasons, we can't keep doing that over and over again for every high bounce. So instead, we are gonna hold the P button for the whole level, increasing the holding B counter just by one. Level 13 is the next, and this level is beyond evil. I spent hours trying to get over this part without pressing the B button, but every time I could reach this small inkable ledge, I just didn't have enough momentum to actually climb it. If any of you guys succeed in completing this part, please let me know in the comment section. The last part of the level features another B input here, since we can't get enough momentum to reach the next platform, and can't use the grappling right away because we lack of range but we can use it afterwards here, instead of further increase our B-Press counter. And so, we can finally complete this level. Or at least, that's what I would say if it wasn't for one more thing. Introducing Uninkable Ledges We can find those evil Uninkable Ledges both in this level and two times in level 26. Those ledges are beyond evil, as you may think you can get over these parts with enough luck. But no, they're just time-wasting traps put there to make our poor inkling suffer for ages before realizing it was all useless. It seems like Nintendo put those to make people like me spend here more time than needed. But jokes apart, 3 jumps for level 12 and 2 jumps for level 26. Level 14 looks like an easy level at first glance, but again, nothing is easy as it seems. This section specifically requires us to trigger this switch to then jump on this wall and reach the next checkpoint, something we don't want to do. We can't get enough momentum to reach the wall. I tried many many times again, but we're just too slow. That's why I gave up. And started over the wall level. So here I aimed the switch and immediately slammed through the moving wall and was barely able to reach the other side. Level 14, zero presses. Level 18, we have to jump here or we'd have to ride this road forever. Not much else to say about this one. Same story for level 19. B press here. Honorable mention this section here with those many squeegees. Dear squeegees, I love you all, but I hope Nogami won't put sections like this ever again. Next, we have level 20. Again, there's no way we can get on this invisible wall without jumping. Another B press. Now, here's the thing. A bounce pad blocks our way to the last boss. And so, we are forced to hold the B button once again. But we are not gonna release it anytime soon. We are gonna defeat one of the most frustrating bosses ever, the Octo Shower, while holding the B button. Once you defeat the boss, we can access Cephalon HQ once again. And here things get interesting. Level 23 is a really cool level, which requires us to time well when to use rails, in order to not get crushed by those deadly rollers. Also Squidback saves lives. Looks like a real enjoyable level if it wasn't for the first jump. We have to jump at the very end of the first rail in order to proceed. So yeah, let's keep this for now. While still holding B, let's start level 27 instead, which features another bounce pad. But now it's time to explain you this little trick. If you keep holding B till the end of the rail, you will end up jumping without jumping. And yeah, this is pretty useful for the first part of level 23. So ladies and gentlemen, Time to finally release the B button and increase our holding B counter one last time, up to 2. Now, Cephalon HQ is our jumpless hell. Level 24. 1, 2, 3, and 4 jumps. Like level 3, 
this is the level which required me more jumps than any other one in the whole run. Level 24, just like level 3, you are the worst. Level 25 is a good level, if you were not trying to complete it with a minimum amount of jumps. The problem is the section in the middle, with the first moving platforms. Again, there is no way we can get over every platform without jumping, so if we're fast enough, we can complete this section with a total of 3 big presses. So, it's finally time to defeat every Inkling's worst nightmare, the entity that caused major sufferings to multiple kids who were trying to enjoy this game in alternative ways. It's finally time to complete level 4. Level 4 may look like one of the easiest levels of the entire campaign. You can climb walls without many efforts, you can destroy everyone who tries to block your path, you can easily swim through every single gap. Well, almost every single gap. Here we are, final checkpoint of the level. Compared to the others, this gap is way too big to be swam through. That's what I thought at first. But then I realized something. I was not alone. That's... Um... The Doctor Hurler keeps throwing moving Berloniums to me, even from the distance. My first idea was to use the knockback coast Berloniums to reach the other side. Somehow? Well, that didn't work as planned. But I kept trying over and over again until I realized something. I can hit Rolloniums with bombs. That must be the solution I thought. And I was right. After many many tries I dropped this bomb in a very specific spot in a very specific moment in order to make the Rolonium fall above the bomb. This will cause the Rolonium to receive a knockback. In this state the Rolonium can't damage me, but I can still use the knockback to my advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, we completed level 4 with 0 jumps. And now, it's finally time to fight Kelly and Octavio, I guess? The fight went as usual, except for the fact that I'm using the worst version of the hero shot, and therefore it took me ages to complete this boss fight. The final obstacle between us and our victory are those last two B presses required to both dodge one of Octavio's erotic fists, and one to land on our victory rail. So, here we have it. And the final count of B inputs to complete Splatoon 2 Octocanyon is 27 B inputs. I know what you may be thinking right now, and yes, this result is pretty underwhelming at first glance, and to be honest, I was expecting way less when I first started the challenge. But we have to keep in mind that the story mode is also a way many new players can learn everything about Splatoon 2's game mechanics. Therefore, using the B button only 27 times, despite the game wanting us to press it multiple times, is still an impressive accomplishment. But anyway, that was all for today. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you want more of this stuff. I'll see you next time. Goodbye from Rowlet.